Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of Carl's Bearded Banter. You join me in my lovely little drawing room, small, understated, um, small little room in Banter Towers here at Castle Beard. And I'm hoping to be joined today by my good friend Jamie Cox from Opie's Beard Co. You can check him out there. All the W's dot opiesbeardco.co.uk Now, I think I can hear the guards bringing him up now up in the tower but um, before we bring him in let's take a bit of a quick gander at what he's about shall we? So here we are at the banter wall. Now we see Opies, they obviously they have their regular beard oils but they also do premium range oils as well as the standard arms and butters now just so we know what we're getting ourselves into here's the man himself mr jamie cox from opie's beard co nice little photograph there almost as if it had been sent just for this little video here hmm. no it wasn't anyway that's enough of this let's get on with the show and meet him shall we And here he is. The guards have let him in. Uh, hello, Jamie. How are you doing? Yeah, Welcome I'm fine, to. Mate. I'm fine. Welcome to um, Bearded Castle. You are in that in now in my banter towers. There. I hope you feel comfortable. I hope the guards weren't too rough with you, bringing you around. You know, and you settled in nice. Very swift. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's only a small room, but I do with it what I can. <laughs> uh, so, welcome to the group. Let's let's get straight on with this, mate. Um, so, let's start with the basics then. What got you into the bearding world, and when did Opis start as a company for you? Um, so, I've always had some element of beard since I was young, um, but I couldn't. I couldn't really grow a proper full beard. Um, for quite a long time, I had a lot. Of, I got. I still have a lot of patchiness in my beard. Um, so I have mostly had a shaved head and a goatee beard um, for a number of years. Uh, and what got me to grow my my beard fully was I watched. I was watching Sons of Anarchy, the TV show, uh, and they've got a character on there called Op. Um, and I noticed that he had a pretty awesome beard. But I also noticed that his beard was. It wasn't like like full and full like right. do you know what i mean like yeah. some guys have a, have a beard and it's like it's like a hedge you know you can literally <laughs> yeah. trim it like a hedge. Yeah. and other guys have like wiry beards i noticed his beard was quite wiry and i thought damn that's kind of the same as mine maybe i should right. go for it so i did i went for it and that's kind of how how i started growing the big beard fair enough and i suppose that answers the next question up was to where did you get the name for your company opis one would assume it was based off that character then. Yeah, so it what what kind of happened was um yeah, I so I started making a couple of beer products just because I was bored and stuff, with absolutely no intention of starting a company. It was literally just my own private stock. Um but then what, what sort of happened was when you make particularly with beard balms, when you make a batch of beard balm, mm -hmm. you'll have like ten beard balms out of a batch. And I'm right. thinking, well, my beard was only short at a time. So I was thinking, well, that's going to last me about eight years. And <laughs> yeah. stuff, stuff yeah. won't keep. So I, yeah. I, you know, I had a couple of mates who had beards and I gave them out to them and they loved them. And um, one of them gave it to his barber and said he and he said he loved them, like stock them. And then before I knew it, I was, I was like, in it. Um, right. So Opie's was, Opie's was just a name that I picked out and I made it through a little logo together and stuck them on the bottles that I made just so I could know what the scents were so that it weren't like blank bottles. Right, um, right. So I didn't really, I came up with a name, but I mean, realistically, if, I, if I'd if i taken my time, I probably would have chose a different name. Okay. If right. I'm honest, but right. OP's is, you know, OP's was there. So I ran with it and then it's just gone straight. It's not done, straight you, not done you too bad, I was going to say, you've, you because you've done really well in the time, especially for yeah. what I've known yeah. <laughs> He's kind of seemed yeah. to have snowballed and going really well. Yeah, well, a lot of people know the name, don't they? And know, I mean, everyone looks at it, says, you know, they know what it is. So it's, you know, it is, yeah, it's kind of good. Yeah, it gives that image as well, which is, you know, it doesn't hurt. 
Of course, yeah. yeah. I think that's you've got to sell. You've got to make make your own image. Yeah? You've got to make your own character stand out from the rest. Make yourself a, like an individual, and I think you've done that really well. So um, yeah. it doesn't help that you you know you're a nice guy as well. You, uh, in my private beer groups, you are one of our sponsors. There, eh? you help us out loads. And me personally, I you know I, out of the hundreds of companies that we could use, there's quite a lot of people who are there who just out to you know, to make a make a book or whatever. Whereas you're you're a decent person, you get involved with the with the group, you answer questions and, and all that, and that's exactly what we wanted for out for private beards and you fit really well, so obviously we want you to do well. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm not it. I've always said to people that I'm not I'm not in groups just to advertise us. Mm. I'm not there just for my company. If I if I didn't run a company I'd still be there. Right. I, I love the beard communities. I was in the beard communities before I started OPs, and right. if it ever ends, then I'll be in them afterwards. Yeah. Um. And you know, the communities are all about helping people out. So, you know, the more people that have got beards, the better it is for my company. The better it is for the communities that I love. So, yeah, I love it. Cool. Well, um, talking about OPs, what would you say? Not in your personal opinion, but what what would you say is the most popular uh, item that you sell? Be it oil, um t-shirts or whatever what's most popular um, do you know what the be- the good thing about ops is that there's not one standout product that sells really really well i wish there was because i'd be able to make just a bunch of that product <laughs> yeah, um, yeah but because we do a lot of stuff i'll tell you what does sell really really well is the soap oh, the right. soap yeah. that i make sells yeah. really really well um it's it's a, it's a it's a good seller and pretty much every order well not every order but Maybe one in four or one in one in three is is a, has got a soap in as part of the order, um, right. but I, I mean I stand by my soap. I, I just to to date it's still the product that I'm most proud of putting together. Good. I I mean it's a fairly recent thing if I remember rightly. It's not. Uh, I remember uh, it coming yeah, out actually. So it took me a long time. Um, cause you, 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 you know, well, Carl, but a lot of people probably don't know that when I go look to make a product or produce a product, I will test the hell out of it. Yeah. I will make, I will make two or three batches of it. I will make sure I've tested it for at least six months. I will give it to close friends to test so that they can give me their honest opinion on it. So a lot of the time I'm working on things for, you know, a year, two years. There's some things I've been working on for two and a half years. Wow, um, yeah. out yet and uh yeah so a lot of stuff is fairly new but not for me i've been i've been in it for a long long time doing my research and putting stuff together right i mean i will agree with you there that, that soap is really good because i've in fact if you check down on my videos there you should see a review for what for, for your soap somewhere is it nettle and charcoal soap um that's so it people go and check that out it's a good soap to you yeah, check out the review. It's uh, it was an awesome review. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it's it's a great product, and um, I know we're the first. We were the first per- people in um, the UK to start doing a nettle and charcoal. I think there's only one place in America that I've looked at since that have done it. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're the right. only people that that have done that. Excellent. You are quite popular in the older uh, beard groups on Facebook and YouTube. If you want, you want to give a plug on a few of the, uh, on a few of the groups that you're in there now. Go for it, mate. Yeah, so we like to be involved in the best beard communities on Facebook. Um, so and we're part of five of them. So we're part of your group, Private Beards, which is very good. Um, we are part of Valhalla Beard Club. We are part of Home of the Beardos. We're part yeah. of Men with Beards. And we're part of our beard club. We sponsor every single one. Um, and with the iBeard Club, we're actually a uh, product master with the iBeard Club and part of their guild. Um, so the guild is basically something that iBeard Club have created. Uh, and what they do is they check every single brand that is part of the guild. They will check all of our cosmetic safety reports and they'll check that we've got the right insurances so that every single company that's involved with their guild is selling their products legally which mm-hmm. is a massive, massive thing that the uh, the industry really, really needs. Yeah, sure. Uh, fair play to them. I, I have in- interviewed Lee from the IBA Club about that as well. I do think it's a really good thing to have for people like me who want to try different products, but, you know, or maybe the new people who are unsure what to, who to go with and, you know, who to trust. They've got a big list there they can go to straight away and check them out. 
Yeah, so I mean, one. safety is safety is something that's pretty massive when it comes to buying any product, anything, yeah, whether you eat yeah. it or put it on your skin. Safety is paramount to what you want to buy um, and what people should be selling. Um, if every company did it legally, we'd be we'd be doing okay. But unfortunately, there's a lot of companies that just pop up um, that either don't know about the cosmetic safety reports that they're supposed to get, or yeah. they just look over it because it costs money. But those yeah. are le- they are a legal requirement, so you yeah. you have to have those to legally sell your products. And at the end of the day, as I said, you should be looking out for your customers' safety. And if you're not, you shouldn't be in a you shouldn't be no. running a business. No, and I think it's it's. I mean, it's it's quite unfair as well if you look at it because you pay for them cosmetic safety reports. You know, you've had to fork out that money. Um, obviously, it's going to reflect in the in in the prices that you have to put out to the public as well. Whereas the people that have not bothered with that, even though it's a legal requirement, they're going to undercut you all the time, or they can do. Some of them don't even do that. Some of them may charge the same or even more. It's just an agreed factor. But I think it's really unfair market that that these people are doing that. So I think it is important that. People, uh, us as product buyers, should look for the ones with the uh, the seal of quality and safety, really. So yeah, look out, I mean, folks. There's there's no excuse for not having them. You you pay for the safety reports once. It's a one off payment. It's not like you have to pay for them every yeah. year. It's a one off yeah. payment. Insurance obviously is a rolling payment of a yearly cost. Um, and obviously, if you, if you're if you're a proper company, you should be paying tax. Um, sure, yeah. so there's that element of it but yeah obviously the companies that are not doing that uh they save a penny so they can obviously spend it on advertising which kind of yeah. you know sticks in the crawl yeah. of everyone doing it properly because we'd love to have that extra money to be able to advertise a lot more and stuff but you know is what it is it so is yeah just keep an eye out for uh, uh you know places that and uh brands that do the cosmetic safety reports and never be afraid to ask you know yeah of course yeah exactly um, just like Opis, which where is it down in the corner there? Check them out; they've got all the reports. I will mention as well: you don't only just do beard oils and balms and such. I mean, uh, you can see here I've got uh, one of your pins. In fact, I think you give me that, but we won't mention that. We, we've got your t-shirts, and you see you do all kinds of other products, not just and stickers yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, I wish you had the stickers I could show people because you've got some nice stickers out there as well. That's yeah, stickers. So, the stickers was a crazy one because when I started the company, everyone kept talking about stickers. Stickers, stickers, stickers. <laughs> I and I was like, oh, couple of nuts out there asking for stickers. <laughs> and then I realised that the beer community are going nuts. It was like being at school again with the football yeah. stickers. And everyone yeah. loves the sticker. And it's gotten to the stage now where I actually sell, sell a sheet of stickers which, you know, starting a beard company, you think it was kind of crazy to sell a, a sheet of stickers, but people love them. But, yeah, yeah. we do. We do about everything. I mean, we do. I've got an enamel cup here. We do those. As I've um, been drinking. Hoodies, T-shirts, hats. We do just about everything apart from pants and socks now, I think. Right. In fact, I'm, I'm, I did mean to wear that. I've got – you do the uh, – you don't do the flat caps, but you do the trucker style caps. I know we have got one. Yeah. I just couldn't find it today, so my apologies for not putting that on. But then again, I think it would look more like a walking advert for open, so it might it's probably yeah, better yeah. I've not got one on. You get it. The back of the head as well yeah. in a truck this time of year, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Um so back to you then, mate. Um what's your experience in, in the birding world as in with competitions yourself personally and uh, with the brand Opis? Yeah, so um, so I, when I started OPs, I had the business plan of going for a year uh, and then starting to go to competitions and stuff like that because I felt like I needed to get my name out there a bit before I suddenly okay. turn up. I was like, hey, look at me, I'm OPs. And everyone be like, who? Um, <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so, I turned, so I turned up to um, Coventry at the Let It Grow. Uh, it would have been 2019. Um, yeah. and that was my first competition and quite a few people knew who I was obviously there's still people that didn't know who I was um, but yeah it was just awesome and I'd, since then I've been to uh, Oxford Beard Festival and there was Beard, Beard On in Alfreton um, so yeah I've been to three events now uh, met yourself at Beard On didn't I so, you um, did yeah, yeah obviously we knew each other before that anyway yeah. but you, you, know, you, you meet a ton of people from the Facebook community so it's not like I mean it's pretty it's kind of scary when you go to the first one because you know yeah. you've got to go and speak to these people that you speak yeah. to online and 
you're never sure about that barrier between whether people are going to be the same online exactly, yeah. as they are and also uh, it's hard to recognize people sometimes with profile pictures being like tiny little things it is yeah uh, you know, unless you get your face on on the club a lot and stuff like that and the groups it can be hard sometimes for people to know your face so um yeah. but I, I would recommend it to anybody when everything gets back to normal get yourself to a, a you know a big competition you don't have to enter um but a lot of the competitions in fact i think pretty much all of them your entry money for the comp goes to charity so yeah there's really no loser no it's not exactly it's well worth doing like say everyone's there for the same reason or similar reason you just have a cracking night it's just it's, yeah good places to go competing or yeah. non-competing good stuff good yeah fun. yeah you can have a couple of drinks have a chat with a load of people and just find out about them when all you've got in common at the end of the day a lot of the time is having a beer but yeah it's awesome it's awesome it's so good uh, and what about opis have they had any involvement in the bid bid world? yeah so again it was so the business plan was the first year not attend any events second year attend events third year be part of events um obviously the third year kind of went down the toilet with yeah. covid um <laughs> but we were scheduled to be at at least two events one being the uh British Beard and Mustache Championships. We were going to sponsor. We were going to. Well, we still are sponsoring uh, the Natural Under Eight Inch Beard competition, and right. we were going to be there, and still will be there as a stool holder next year. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be at Beard On as a stool holder, um, and I will be trying to get into a couple of others as a stool holder as well. But obviously, at the moment, I'm going to have to wait and see where the chips fall on everything because obviously everything's up in the air. Yeah, well, good luck with that. And obviously, I'll see you next year at them competitions, no doubt. Yeah, as soon as they get back on, I'm on it. You know, I'm there. Yeah, I was I was disappointed to miss out on Brawl. Um, yeah. Quite frankly, I couldn't afford it at the time because I had to buy a new car. Uh, so I missed Brawl, which unfortunately turned out to be a massive shame because it's basically the, been the only event that's been able to happen this year, which is January. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, next year we'll all get back on track, I'm sure. Right, Jamie, okay, going to try and prize the box open a little bit here. Do you have any kind of products in development now with Opis or anything, you know, just in the mind that you're thinking about, anything ticking over that could, could be coming up in the future that you can tell us about? Yeah, so um, we should be receiving beginning of next week and then it should be on the website by the end of next week, hopefully. We should be starting to do gift cards again. Uh, oh. We did previously do gift vouchers, uh, but now we've moved and done gift cards just because they're smaller uh, and a bit better for the environment. So uh, we're going to be doing gift cards. Um, we're also going to be releasing two new products in the start of the year. So we currently do the Greedy Men and the Filthy Grin in a balm and an oil. Those are going to be coming out in a beard butter as well oh, to complete excellent. that range. Um, so we're going to have all across the board, we're going to have you can be able to get any scent in a balm, a butter, and an oil. That's um, excellent news, yeah. And the biggest piece of news is early 2021, we are going to be starting to do a beard wash. All right. Okay. Yeah, so that will go. We obviously do the soap at the moment. You do the soap, uh, yeah. yeah. But obviously, when, when you're traveling and stuff like that, yeah, it's, it's hard to take a big bar of soap away. It is, yeah, yeah. It up in foil or, or to clean film or something like that um so it's easier just to carry up you know a, a beard wash around with you it also works as a body wash as well um yeah, excellent. so i think that'll be that'll be good for people because some people don't like soap you no. know it's and, a great uh, soap all... but some yeah. people are not soap people it's a lot easier to store in the shower as well if it's in a bottle you can you know you normally have the shelf there you can stick it on there and like say you take it with you anywhere you want to go which is not that easy yeah. with soap, I agree. So it's definitely worth having one of them. So I'll definitely look forward to seeing that out on the shelves. So Yeah, it'll um, be early early 2021. I hope in January, possibly February. At the latest, it'll be February. Excellent. Thanks for that bit of information. So um, let's go now. We're going to go to Desert Island Beards. I can't play it. I don't have the rights to the music. Da -da -da -da, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> you've, been, you, you've been trapped on a desert island now, or whatever, let's say. And... You can you can have one beard product with you, one of your beard products with you. Now, what would it be? And it's Ooh. all you can use for, for forever. It, 
it would be it would definitely be a beard butter. Um, scent scent is a tough one. Probably probably the filthy grin, butter, right. um, because I've always loved the filthy grin scent. Yeah, uh, sherbet lemon's awesome. Yeah, um, but I think I think when the filthy grin comes out, that will probably be my go to product. Um, right. But uh, butter is pretty much what what I use all the time. Yeah. Um, mostly because I don't give a stuff what my beard looks like. So when it comes <laughs> to like doing balm and stuff like that, um, I'll rarely use balm because I'm at the point where you know I don't really mind what my beard looks like when I go out. So uh, it's all about conditioning for me now. Yeah. So um, yeah. beard butters are pretty much what I use. So yeah, filthy grin, I think. Excellent. I, I yeah, and I can see why you would choose a butter as well. It's a really good product, uh, and one that's got long. You know, it, you can put it in. And I, I, always, everyone says this, and I know you kind of flip it on his head you don't sort of agree with this a lot because i always say use a beard butter at night but you're saying well why you can use it in the day well i do like it because it, it soaks in you've got all that time at night time for all the, the 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 goodness or whatever you want to call it for the butters yeah. to soak in overnight. yeah i'm not, I'm not opposed to people use it at night time no uh, i know that in fact you know, I, I myself use it at night time but when i wake up in the morning i'll use it again yeah I'll i know what you it. mean you can it, use it in the yeah, daytime you... and, and night time i think um, yeah. that needs to be getting away from nights like, only at night time um, products. I think most people see it as a nighttime product, but it, it's not. It's perfect. It's just yeah. a bit more. It's a bit more easy to use, and like say the oil as well, and, and balm to get. You just use that, and you you're kind of doing the same job. So it's like, like a a goal between between the two. I think. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell people when to use when to use products. <laughs> no. Everyone, you have to use it now. Grow, if you, yeah, if you can grow a beard, you're a big boy, you know. So um, <laughs> you, you, it's up to you when you use your product. Yeah. You know? you, yeah. in the daytime go with it and if you want to use them at night that's fine too excellent so okay let's go i think final question here um let's go out there what about in the in the big wild world is there any kind of anyone with a beard that you kind of look look up to or admire or just think that's a cracking beard there's tons there's absolutely tons of guys out there that when when you're part of the beard community on Facebook and stuff like that. And especially even when, when you go to competitions and stuff, it's, it really blows your mind. Um, just the amount of cracking beards that you see. Uh, yeah. I myself have a couple of personal favorites. Um, Tony Kelly's beard is, has always been my favorite. You know, right. since, I, since I started the beard community, I looked at, I saw Tony Kelly's beard. I didn't have a clue who Tony Kelly was. I didn't know he was part of the management of, beard club i just saw the beard and i was like wow because he's got like this it's like a two-tone it's almost like do you know do you know when like somebody's two tones a car the side of it yeah it's got like a different color at the top and then a different color at the, he's got his beard is like that it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, like decaled it and done like a load of stuff it's just yeah like i say it's silver at the bottom and then it's dark at the top and, it, and it's awesome and obviously bmg is another one um you had him on your show of course and the yeah. guy's beard is is immense and the mustache yeah. he's got immense as well. Um, there's 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 loads of guys, you know. The the, the um, John Jackson from Broadbeard has got an amazing beard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know a lot of his guys that roll with him also have awesome beards. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just too many to mention. You know, yeah, just exactly. Yeah. I, I think once you're on that beard world, you sort of notice them out there anyway, don't you? And you're kind of thinking, man, he's got a good beard, that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Secretly, you're thinking. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a, well, I don't say I'll go yeah. up to him and say that's a cracking beard. That if I see someone on yeah. the street, that's it. Yeah, well, not in the pub anymore because we can't. But you know what I mean. When you did, I'll say cracking beard, mate. Going just yeah. I, do, you know. I want to do that. You know, I want to do that film face off, but with beards and just you know, <laughs> yeah. <change. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> just the beard do that. That'd be awesome. On the po- point on that uh, beard off. That if you know Tom Hardy who starred in Brosnan, the film about the. the the prisoner, uh, not Brosnan, Bronson, film about the prisoner, Charles Bronson. Yeah. Charles Bronson actually shaved his moustache off, put it into an envelope, posted it out, and then the special effects guys for the movie put it onto a, like, a, you know, whatever they do, a little strip, so he stuck it on. So actually, Charles Bronson himself says, I starred in that film, that that moustache he's got there is actually his moustache, and what he wore was actually his hair that Tom Hardy had stuck on his face. 
Well, I hope it was his moustache that he shaved off and posted to him. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just put a whole another so, whole another slant I, on it, mate. Yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I can't imagine that. How how the hell do they stick a moustache from a from a? I assume you sent in a jiffy bag because you want to do it properly. How do you get a moustache out of a jiffy bag and then stick it to someone's top lip without well, I mean, looking? We know it happens because look at all the people that actors that don't have beards and then they come in the film and they have them stick on beards. We do know they exist. So they've got yeah. to do that. They've got to transplant their hairs onto the sticky sheet somehow. And uh, it, yeah. I think it's probably in the uh, extra credits of the film if you watch, I, I think it is. Uh, it's Charles Bronson who's doing his narrating and he tells you that this is what he did. He shaved it off so he could be in the film and, and that's, what, that's well, how he used it. Yeah. I want to just fast forward it to the end now just yeah. to see what but that's crazy because Tom Hardy can grow a good beard. He's, he's, he's got a good, he's got a solid beard on him. So I don't know why. I know, I don't right. know why, yeah. I don't know why he would. Maybe that was the director thing. Like we want you to do this. I don't. Really it want. was probably just a kind of homage to Charles Bronson. He, you know, when he did it, and it, it, as a matter of a sign of respect that they put it in. I don't know. But I mean, okay. he's a bit of a strange man, anyway, isn't he? So it kind of doesn't surprise me as well when you. What you think about yeah, it? I think Bronson's definitely, uh, yeah, he's definitely up there with, yeah, he's a, <laughs> a brilliant man, should we say? Yeah, well, I won't say it to his face, though, but you know, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thanks for joining me, it's been fantastic having you on. Um, for anybody who's not checked it out, I don't know where you've been living, but please go and check out uh, all the W's dot opisbeard dot co opisbeardco.co.uk sorry I'll get it right and also you can find him on YouTube or Facebook and the addresses for them is at the bottom there scrolling along the bottom so go and check him out uh, again Jamie before you go I would like to say thank you for joining me you've been a star bearded banter so I would like to send you one of these bearded banter star golden stickers it's a solid gold sticker honest uh, I'll send Lovely. it out to you mate and uh, yeah are you going to shave your moustache up? <laughs> yeah, well, if you ever interview me, I'll shave off so you can stick my moustache <laughs> Yes, and thanks, thanks for having me on, Carl. It's been absolutely awesome. Um, everybody, if you haven't subscribed to Carl's uh, videos, because they're brilliant. Good point. Thanks a lot, mate. I'll see you soon. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Thank you.